many times people are involved in accidents that involve one vehicle, single vehicle accident, maybe a rollover or loss of control, vehicle runs off the road. Uh, many times lawyers overlook that potential as a product's liability case and we specialize in looking at those type of cases and oftentimes find that there's some problem with the product either that causes the loss of control of the vehicle to go off the road, for example a tire blowout or a tire detread may result in the vehicle going off the road that results in injury. Other times they defect in the steering mechanism of the car may result in the, in the vehicle going out of control, going off the road. Uh, sometimes it may be that the vehicle goes off the road or the car goes off the road because the person loses control for any number of reasons and the car, because it's not safe for crashes or crashworthy as they call it, uh, someone's injured because the car didn't protect them like it's supposed to in a crash. One of the areas that we are looking at many cases and handling many cases uh, involve roof crush. For example, if someone runs off the road and the vehicle rolls over, the roof and the vehicle is supposed to be designed with enough strength to support the, the safety cage of the car to give enough survival space for the occupants. Many times the roofs on, some, on vehicles are just not safe enough. They're not strong enough. And they don't have a, a sufficient safety cage. Uh, we handled a case uh, a year ago involving a young man whose seat belt spooled out in, in a rollover. The uh, car rolled over one and a half times. The seat belt is supposed to lock up when you're in, in a crash, uh, but the problem in a rollover ca crash is that the seat belt may become unlocked or spool out. And in this particular case, a poor, poor fellow was uh, basically unrestrained even though he was wearing the seat belt. His head struck the roof of, of the vehicle and he resulted in, uh, and as a result, is, is paralyzed. We've had a number of cases involving fuel fed fires. One of the first cases I handled back in the early 80s involved a, a fellow that was burned as a result of a rollover of an SUV and uh, fuel spilled into the passenger compartment and he was severely burned over 80% of his body. Manufacturers know that when a car crashes that the fuel system has to stay intact and not leak fuel because they know that there's, there's going to be a fire. Uh, gasoline is extremely explosive. They say that a gallon of gasoline has the equivalent of 24 sticks of dynamite of en energy, so they've got to contain the gasoline. Uh, fuel filler systems can fail. Fuel tanks get punctured. Uh, oftentimes there are structures that are built into the car like bolts and things like that are close to the fuel tank that in a crash will puncture the fuel tank. Engineers know about this and they're supposed to check for that in their crash test program. Oftentimes they don't. And many times when the car companies find out that they do have a problem with a fuel system but to save money rather than redesign they go ahead and take the chance, put the vehicle on the market and pay the damages. We've had a lot of cases involving uh, defective tires. Uh, many times there are uh, what we call detread or tread separation cases where the, the, the because the tire is not designed properly or manufactured properly the tread of the tire can separate or come loose while someone's drive, driving down the road. Um, if it happens on a rear tire especially uh, it can cause loss of control. The, the vehicle can go into what we call skate and, and the operator can't control the vehicle, no matter how skillful they are. Um, the, the vehicle can go out of control, it will go off the road, hit something, or sometimes it'll roll over. But entire manufacturers are aware of that, and, and what we found in handling these cases is that many times the tires, when they're originally designed, they've got the proper design, they've got the things that they need for the tire to, to, to uh, operate properly, but then the cost cutting starts, and they, the manufacturers uh, usually from upper management, uh, tell the engineers to start saving money, shaving things off, and they start reducing the, the tire's capability. They, they try to save a penny here or a penny there, but every time they make a, a change and reduce, for example, the wedge of the tire or some other, uh, other safety aspect of the tire, they increase the likelihood that somebody is going to suffer a tire tread separation uh, at some point uh, while someone's driving. A lot of times the uh, rollovers occur with uh, uh, what we call SUVs, sport utility vehicles. Uh, they 
have been extremely popular over the last 20 years. Um, the vehicles are primarily passenger cars that were built on truck bodies. The, the trucks were originally designed to haul cargo. They're narrow, they're tall, and then when the SUV craze started, uh, car manufacturers started putting a body on the back of their truck and calling it an SUV. It's the same truck platform is really not designed for passengers. Uh, because of this, the, the SUV is normally more narrow and more tall, and so that is more likely to turn over than an average passenger car, which is low and wide. We see many deaths. We see many paralyzing injuries, uh, loss of limbs, uh, mainly uh, catastrophic type injuries. The Jernigan case involved a uh, a Oldsmobile. Uh, what we learned in that case was that there was a cost reduction program at General Motors called Project 2500 where the, the goal was to reduce the cost of manufacturing of the car by $2,500 per car and they did that by thinning metal out, making structural changes and things that, that reduce the protective nature of the, of the car. And in this particular case, um, a young man was riding as a belted passenger, was involved in a frontal impact. The, uh, the passenger compartment basically collapsed in on him and, and fractured his skull. And as a result, he is uh, basically an infant for life, an otherwise brilliant young man who had a great future is now basically helpless and will have to have somebody take care of him for the rest of his life. But when we found out about Project 2500, uh, the jury was outraged when they saw exactly what General Motors had done to, to try to save money. The defect in that particular case was the, the structural integrity of the front of the car. They had reduced the strength of the, of the rails that are designed to crush in a crash. They had uh, changed the door beam, which is supposed to protect the occupants in a crash, uh, to a small it was from a big beam in the older cars, and they reduced it to a little water pipe looking uh, door beam that, that failed. The verdict was $122 million, uh, 22 compensatory, $100 million punitives. Our lawyers are trained to look at specific defects. We study those defects. We're aware of them, uh, and that's, that's what we do. We help people who, who need help. If somebody's catastrophically injured or killed in a car accident, they or the family members need to call Beasley Allen at 1-800-898-2034. We look at these cases all the time. There's no charge for us to look at the case to see if there may be a products liability case, and we're happy to do it.